Welcome to Solid Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, with one of many videos available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In this session, we will demonstrate the use of HSR and HSM to machine this mold insert. Now let's take a look at the part itself. As you can see, the part itself is being held in a machine vise, as well as its stock around it. Now the stock in this particular case is the exact outside measurements of the part itself. So the machining will be done only on the surfaces on top, only on the top area itself. If we take a look at the part itself, you can actually see that the surfaces have to be done around here, plus as well as different surfaces inside this area over here. So we'll be using several different methods of HSR and HSM to machine the part. Now we'll start with opening up our HSR operation that we've done over here, our roughing operation. And if we take a look at the operation itself, you'll see that we're using the HM roughing method, which is the hybrid machining roughing. We have our target chosen as usual. And if we take a look at the target, the target is our part itself. Now, if we continue down, we have our tool. In this particular case, we'll be using a 20 millimeter end mill. Our constraint boundaries is taken automatically around the target itself by an automatically created box around the part itself. Now, if we take a look at our passes, you can see that we'll be leaving an offset of 0.3 millimeters on the wall and on the floor as well. We'll be doing a step down of every five millimeters. And as far as the step down type, we'll be doing constant step down. Now, if we go further down, we have the option of step over type. We have hybrid machining spiral, core, or cavity. Now, since this part is more than just a core or a cavity, it has to be machined in this area around here. So it's not a complete core, but it's not a complete cavity as well. So I've used the option of hybrid machining spiral. If we take a look now at the simulation itself, first you can see also the exact stock plus the vise that's holding the part itself. And if I start running it, you can see that it's working from the outside in on the part, working almost like a profile contour on the part itself, stepping in every single time the amount that it has to step in. Now, as you can see also, there are large steps on the part itself since we're going down every five millimeters. So this was good for the first rough cut, but leaving this for a finished cut or for a semi-finished cut, this is still a little bit too much material to be left over. Plus, there are certain areas where the tool cannot go into because the tool was relatively large, but we wanted to first take off the major excess material to get down to this point over here. So for our next operation, we'll use the rest rough option. So our next operation will be HSR rest rough. If I were to open up the operation itself, you can see I'll be using the option of rest roughing. Our geometry is the same target. The tool in this particular case will be a 12 millimeter ball end mill to be able to get into more areas where the previous tool could not get into. Our constraint boundaries stay the same as an automatic box created around the geometry. And if we go to our passes, you'll see that we're still keeping a wall offset of 0.3 millimeters, but our step down this time is set at two millimeters. Now, if we were to go into our edit passes section, just to take a look, you'll see it's actually working automatically according to the material that was left over. The stock definition style is automatic according to the leftover material that we've had over here. If I were to click on show, you can see the actual material that it is going to be working on. Let's now take a look at the simulation itself. 
again using the option of solid verify and you can see that the tool will work only in the areas where there's material to be taken off it will not work in these outside areas over here above here it'll just work directly on the material exactly where there is material to be taken off leaving 0.3 millimeters of excess material for our next operation now if we take a look at this we're ready to start our finishing operations but in this particular case since this is a mold and i do need a very nice finish i'm going to first do a semi-finish operation on the part itself and then bring it down to a finish operation now our next operation will actually start with our hsm operations and we'll start off with a linear cut now i said i'm going to start off by doing a semi-finished cut so you can see i chose a linear machining the tool in this particular case will be a 10 millimeter ball and mill and note in my geometry i've actually used an option of apply fillets what apply fillets will actually do since i have here small radiuses in the corner itself the apply fillet will actually build a larger radius over here so that when the tool goes over this section over here it'll actually do it with a radius motion instead of a sharp turn as if it's working on this type of a surface over here now if we go into our constraint boundaries you'll see we'll be using a created automatically as we did in our previous operations and in our passes you'll see that since we're doing a semi-finish operation i'll be leaving a wall offset of 0.1 millimeters as well as a floor offset of 0.1 millimeters our step over again since this is a semi-finish operation will be every half a millimeter and this will be working across the entire part itself now note since my x is in this direction and y is in this direction and i wanted to actually go from this side towards this side over here so i wanted to work actually 90 degrees so i'll put in a value of defined angle by 90 degrees if we take a look at our simulation again using the solid verify simulation you'll note that the tool works back and forth linear cuts across the part until it gets to the very end over there now let me stop it for a moment because i wanted to show you with using our host cad to take a look at the toolpath itself if we take a look at the actual toolpath itself you'll note that when we get to the areas of these corners over here it actually has a radius toolpath around this edge even though the tool is actually the radius of the tool is larger than the radius in this corner over here since i, I opened the option of apply fillet it automatically created a fillet that was larger than the tool causing this to do a radius type of a movement on this corner itself now before i go into my actual finish cut i'd still like to bring down a little more the areas of those fillets that i did not go into so i'm going to do another semi-finished operation of rest machining on those corners so if we take a look at the operation itself we'll be using the option of rest machining we'll also be using a tool in this particular case that that's a six millimeter ball and mill and our constraint boundaries remain the same as before and our reference tool is set at 12 millimeters ball and mill this is exactly what we created before when we did our applied fillet option in the previous operation in our passes we'll be leaving again 0.1 millimeters for the semi finish and we'll be doing a step down and step over of 0.2 millimeters if we were to take a look at the simulation itself using solid verify you'll see that the tool will work exactly 
on those radiuses as shown over here. Again, leaving 0.1 millimeters for the finished cut itself, bringing it a lot closer to the condition where it can actually do a much better finish on the part itself. You'll note that it's going to every single corner that it can possibly get to, finishing that off without actually having to choose anything. It'll automatically detect those areas that it has to be machined, working exactly on those corners. Now, in our next operations, we'll actually be starting with our finish cuts themselves. Now, if we take a look in this part, I'd like to actually first machine these areas around here without this core area over here. And I'm going to do that separately from this area. And I'm going to use the linear option to machine out these areas over here. If I were to go into the operation itself, you could see I'll be using the linear machining. Again, I'll be using an applied fillet for the tool to actually roll up on the corners themselves. The tool itself will be a six millimeter ball and mill. And this time, if we go into my constraint boundaries, we won't be using the create automatically. Instead, I've used the option of create manually tool contact areas. If I were to look at the tool contact areas themselves, you can see that the tool contact areas is between these two areas, between the outside and up until this boundary over here. Now, if I were to go into passes, you can see this time we have a wall offset of zero, giving us the actual finish cut itself. I've tightened the tolerance down to give us a really nice, smooth finish on the part itself. And the step over in this case is 0 0.05 millimeters to make for a nice, smooth finish. The angle that I'll be working with it in, in this particular case, will be at zero degrees on the part itself. If we take a look at the simulation, and you can see, again, the tool going back and forth on the part with a linear motion, machining that entire surface. And when it gets to this area over here, you'll see that it actually starts moving around this area without going into this area itself. Only machining the areas where I actually wanted it to machine. This area I'll actually do in a different operation, which we'll take a look on at in a few moments. And as you can see, it's going around the entire part. Now that it's at the other side, you'll see now that it's completing this area and then complete the entire part itself when it gets to the other side. As you can see, it completed over there and now finishing off the part on the other side until the very end. Now, what's still left over to do over here, again, is this core area over here, as well as the radiuses themselves have to be finished, the actual corners themselves, plus these small little inserts over here, this little cavity over here as well on the other side, which for that we really need a very small tool to work correctly in. And we'll show you in a few moments exactly how we finish those areas using HSM. Now in our next operation, we'll be doing a combined constant Z and linear in this remaining area. As this area has parts that can be done perfectly well in linear because of its shallow decline of the surfaces that we have over here, and the constant Z works better on the steeper areas over here. If I were to open up the operation, you'll see that we're working combined constant Z with linear, and we'll be using the exact same tool as the previous operation. And if we take a look at our constraint boundaries, you'll see that we're working only in this area itself. You can also see that we're using constant Z passes and the linear passes. Now in the constant Z passes, since again, this is our finish cut, we are going to have a wall offset and a floor offset of zero and the tight tolerance of 
two microns because I really want to get a very nice finish on the part itself. Our step down is also very small of 0.05 millimeters. One other thing though that should be noted is the limits. Since the constant Z passes works better on steeper areas, I've limited it to work between 35 and 90 degrees. Anything less than 35 degrees, it won't work in those areas. Whereas in linear passes, I have just the opposite. It'll work anywhere between zero and 38 degrees, a three degree overlap between the constant Z passes. By the way, this value is put in here automatically when I put the value of 35 degrees over here. That is automatically updated to 38 degrees. If I were to take a look at the simulation, you can see that the constant Z would be working on the areas that are relatively steeper, going down on the part itself, leaving the shallow areas to be worked on by the option of the linear operation within the combined operation of constant Z and linear. Now what we still have left to do on this part itself are the corners that have to be finished up over here as well as these areas over here. The tool that we worked on was a little bit too big to go into this area. So we'll be doing that with a different type of operation called constant step over. However, we'll first start with the rest machining for these corners. If I were to open up the operation, you'll see we're using a smaller end mill of a four millimeter ball end mill with the constraint boundaries of the entire part and a reference tool of 8.2 millimeters, which is actually 0.2 millimeters bigger than the radius that was actually left there to give it a little bit of an overlap. In the passes, since I do want to get a good finish over here as well, I use the same step down and step over as I did in my previous operations for finishing the part in the linear and constant Z passes. If we were to take a look again at the simulation, you'll see that the tool will work exactly only on those corners, machining the parts exactly where it needs to be machined, just on those corners itself. Now, as I said in my last operation, I want to work in this area as well as in the cavity on the other side as well. So for that, as I said, I'll use the option of 3D constant step over, where I'll be using, again, the small end mill of a four millimeter ball end mill. And my drive boundaries will be this selected faces as shown over here, these areas as shown over there, as well as my constraint boundaries being the same. If I were to take a look at my passes, again, I'll be using the same step overs on the part itself and I'll, again, I'll be using a very tight tolerance. If I were to look at the simulation over here itself, you'll note that the tool will work exactly in these areas over here, taking on the exact shape of that area, giving it a nice, smooth finish. For more videos on SolidCam Professor, please go to our website, www.solidcam.com, and look for the tab called SolidCam Professor. Thank you for joining us on SolidCam Professor. Take care and have a nice day.